My name is Dr. Paul Tomaszewski, uh, orthopedic sports medicine surgeon, knee and shoulder reconstruction. And today we're gonna to talk about ACL reconstruction, but when to do an extra articular reconstruction. Uh, no disclosures. So today we'll talk about ACL reconstruction. What, um, what is defined as success after an ACL reconstruction? The anterior lateral knee complex and what are lateral uh, extra articular procedures and how that plus an ACL and what the outcomes are after that. <coughs> so ACLs are one of the most common knee injuries in sports involving a landing, pivoting, and change of direction. It's the sixth most common orthopedic procedure that we perform um, and it's about 400,000 per year in the United States. Adolescents and young adults, females four to six times more likely than males are at the highest risk for ACL tears. Um, in the last decade, there's been a substantial increase <clears throat> in ACL tears secondary to the sports specialization that people have, uh, young, young athletes have done. Um, change in sport par participation patterns increase the risk of lower extremity risk uh, for ACL uh, tears. So the goal of ACL reconstruction uh, is to prevent instability and restore function. It also is for long-term knee health. It will prevent uh, knee osteoarthritis, meniscal tears, uh, chondral lesions. But it's a long, arduous rehab, six to 12 months. There's a social and academic um, burden as well as a financial burden. So how are we doing now with ACL reconstructions and what is defined as success? First is that stability of the knee that we want to get. Next is, are we able to return that athlete back to the, back to the field? And are we returning that athlete back to the same level of play that they were before? And if we get them back on the field and return to play, are we preventing graft re-rupture? And then ultimately, is there knee preservation and, and preservation uh, and prevention of knee osteoarthritis? And then we'll learn today how to improve that outcome. Is it physical therapy? Is it surgical techniques? Is it graft choice? And most specifically, we'll look at lateral extra-articular procedures. So ACL outcomes and return to play. Over the course of the last 10 to 11 years, uh, this is a long list of literature that shows that it's not as good as we once thought. We often quote that you know, 82 to 95% of patients after an ACL do very well. If we get into the weeds a little bit about that and the return to play, and the return to play at the same level, it's much lower than that, and almost unacceptably, unacceptably low. You know, back in 2011, it was 45% of patients returned to play at the same level. Uh, now that has definitely improved over the course of the last 10 years with our surgical techniques. Now we're up to 81% return to play. But if you think about it, if one in five athletes that get, get an ACL reconstruction don't return to the same level of play, are we really providing the success that we you know, say we can? So not only is return to play uh, a big marker of how we determine success, graph re-rupture. Graph re-rupture, we quote oftentimes, is three to 5%. If you look in the literature, it's anywhere from two to almost 30% re-rupture of the graft. Uh, back in 2014, Hewitt saw 30% you know, incidence of new ACL graft within two years after first ACL reconstruction. As we move on uh, up into 2020, again, re-rupture is, is down towards 8 to 10 percent. Obviously, di different graft has different graft re-rupture rates. And the reason we don't want to have that re-rupture is that ACL revisions are far inferior to, to primary ACL reconstructions. All patient-reported outcomes, return to play, and re-rupture after a revision ACL are much, much higher. You know, there's our specific um, groups of of athletes that are even at increased risk. Um, in this 2021 paper, two-thirds of female soccer players who had an ACL reconstruction who returned to soccer had a new injury within five to 10 years, and 42% had a new ACL injury. And they're twice as likely to have an ACL re-tear. So what are the risk factors for ACL re-tear after ACL reconstruction? Is age, you know, return to sport in a cutting, pivoting sport, gender, Females much greater than males. Ligament is laxity and hypermobility. The wrong graft choice, the poor graft placement, those are surgical things that we can control. Rotational instability and high grade pivot shift. Uh, and then limb and angular deformities. And why are we seeing this, this cordance of 
what we say is you know, a good success rate of ACL and return to play and graft re-rupture are much higher. Is it you know, our, our inadequate surgery? Um, is it, you know, they need more time? You know, is, is 12 months long enough? Is it 18 months? Is it two years? Is it psychosocial factors? Uh, are there unrealistic expectations? Um, so we, looking at that, you know, today I'm gonna to talk about lateral extraarticular procedures and see how that can prevent, you know, re-tear of the ACL and hopefully prevent um, those patients from, uh, promote those patients from to moving on in their career. So the anterior lateral complex was first described in 1879 by Dr. Paul Sagan. Uh, it was this avulsion fracture of the anterior lateral uh, part of the tibia, as you can see here in the bottom right hand corner, it's kind of small up there. Um, again, uh, later on, Houston uh, described the importance of the middle third capsular ligament, again, structure on the lateral side, that was frequently torn in combination with ACLs. Um, and it's basically the same spot as Dr. Sagan. Uh, described. And all of this can be described as the anterior lateral ligament complex. Um, and you can see in the top left picture, that's the lateral side of the knee, and the star of the anterior lateral ligament as it courses from the lateral femoral condyle to the proximal lateral tibia. It's made up of the IT band, and it's a secondary stabilizer uh, to ACL, and most, most importantly for internal rotation. And it's often injured with the ACL. In fact, you, you know, we learned that a Sagan fracture is pathognomonic for an ACL tear. So what are these lateral extraarticular procedures? It's an ALL reconstruction, which is a, usually an allograft that we take. Um, <clears throat> we then place on a lateral femoral condyle, attach it to the, the femur, and then attach it to the uh, proximal lateral tibia. Um, there's also something called the modified Lemaire's, which is a lateral extraarticular tenodesis which is taking a strip of the IT band, weaving it underneath the lateral collateral ligament, again, to reconstruct or recreate that lateral complex, and it'll control that internal rotation. And so why should we use extraarticular reconstructions? So we know that ACL reconstructions reliably stabilize anterior to posterior motion, and ACL helps to control rotation, but it doesn't do it completely. So those other parts of the rotation are the ALL, the IT band, and these extraarticular procedures may improve outcomes after ACL reconstruction by improving the rotational control of the knee. So it, this has also been borne out in the literature over the course of the last you know, five to six years, multiple, multiple different papers uh, looking at combined ACL reconstructions um, with a lateral extraarticular procedure and they do remarkably better than ACL alone in specific populations. Most recently in October of this year, uh, this was a study at AJSM, looking at 111 uh, patients that are 16 years old with ACL reconstruction with hamstring autograft, um, 40 patients in that cohort and 71 patients in the hamstring with the lateral extraarticular tenodesis. ACL reconstruction alone with hamstring had a 15% graft rupture rate versus the hamstring with the lateral extraarticular procedure had a 0% graft rate. Obviously, it's not long-term data, but it's definitely better outcomes in the short term for ACL with a lateral extraarticular procedure, and they had much better knee uh, stability scores. So uh, there are potential complications. Um, it's an additional you know, time in the OR. It's additional incisions. Could be increasing bleeding. You could have an injury to the lateral collateral ligament if you do that uh, Lemaire's technique. If it goes underneath the, the lateral collateral ligament, there may be numbness, irritation of the IT band. Over tightening the knee or over constraint is the one that is often looked at um, and, and kind of controversial going back and forth uh, between the two. You know, you know, implants may need, need to be removed. And there may be a growth disturbance if this is done in an um, adolescent. Um, was not fully grown yet. So in 2022, when do we think about doing an extra articular reconstruction in, in combination with an ACL? In a young athlete, and that's less than 25, that's returning to pivoting and cutting sport. Um, there's generalized ligamentous laxity or knee hyperextension is the most common. If they have a high grade pivot shift or on exam their knee is, is lax, that's suggestive of that lateral sided injury. If they have increased posterior slope or um, and then, <clears throat> most specifically in soft tissue ACL reconstruction, specifically the hamstring and a skeletally immature 
uh, athletes, as we saw by that stu recent study. And then if uh, most, if not all, ACL revisions, we would add it.